Hi, you guys. Erin here. I just wanted to uh, pop in here real quick and drop a little astrological perspective as to what in the world is going on out there. I've gotten, a, I think, five messages this week from people saying it feels like Mercury is in retrograde. And it's not, but there's pretty uh, justified reasons for for feeling that way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to uh, share my screen with you. And okay, so what we are looking at here is the zodiacal wheel. Okay, this right here, this is the zodiac. Okay, this is a symbol for Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, and Gemini. Okay. Now, what these little symbols are, are the prominent celestial bodies, okay? And this is showing us where they are in accordance to the zodiac as of right now, okay? Um, this is Venus, Mercury, Sun, uh, Uranus, Chiron, Moon, Neptune, Mars, Saturn, Jupiter, Pluto, and these little guys right here are called the North and South Node, okay? And they all influence different sorts of energies, okay? They all are there for a purpose, Okay, and I think what I'm going to start with here is I'm going to talk about Venus. And Venus is in retrograde. Mercury is not. Okay, this little symbol right here is the symbol for retrograde. You can see there's no symbol for Mercury to be in retrograde. So Venus is in retrograde. So the North and South Node are in retrograde, but that's not unusual. They're they're very common. It's very usual that they are in retrograde. Okay, um, so I'm not going to talk about those. I'm going to focus just for right now. I'm going to focus on Venus in Gemini in retrograde. Okay, Venus is the influencer of love. Okay, beauty, relationships, partnerships. Venus rules Taurus and Libra. Okay, those are both very like uh, about being in a Libra is a sign of partnerships and Taurus is a very like sensual sign. Okay, um, and Gemini is ruled by mercury okay gemini is the sign of duality it's it's mutable it's adaptable it, it like wants change almost like constant change okay it's also the sign of communication and sharing information um media that sort of thing um so that being said venus retrograding through gemini it could kind of feel a little bit like mercury retrograde but it's not um, it's, this is about really, in my opinion, there might be like, kind of like weird little changes going on in people's relationships, but let's also not forget again, Venus love. Okay. Um, it's Venus is the influencer of love. It's really important in my opinion, my astrological professional opinion that we recognize love for ourself in this time. And not only because of this, because there's so many other things going on. It's very important to remember to love ourselves. It might be like kind of bouncing all over the place right now. There's so much crazy energy going on. But so like reevaluate maybe um, choices that you made that maybe have caused some challenges that you have had to rise above, or maybe you're going through a process of having to rise above, you know, some challenging situations. Uh, it's, it's really important to like, reevaluate that these are all lessons that everything here is karmic lessons um and and just to remember to love yourself that's most important here and then also when it comes to relationships recognize that we are being influenced with this um this energy that wants us to sort of like rethink uh gemini has a lot to do with like intellect thinking okay so rethink like how our relationship is you know going rethink reevaluate what we love about that person really important to remember that in my opinion okay next thing i'm going to talk about is this energy right here this is woof okay um this is pluto this is jupiter and this is saturn okay and pluto Okay, let's see. I think the best way for me to make sense of this all is maybe associate it with Greek, Greek mythology. Okay, Pluto is associated with Hades, the ruler of the underworld. Okay, like death and rebirth. Okay, powerful, slow, powerful transformational processes. Pluto influences the psyche. Okay, um, Jupiter is associated with Zeus. 
Okay, Jupiter influences wisdom, philosophy, luck, optimism, long distance travel. Uh, it's, it's a very beneficial energy. But again, remember that Zeus and Hades energy here. Okay, now this is Saturn. Saturn is associated with Kronos. Okay, Kronos, Saturn influences time, first of all. Okay, Kronos is like the, the ruler of time, also very much associated with death. Not the death and rebirth part, it's just death. Okay, it's really like strict and stern energy. Saturn can be kind of tough on us. It's like that's where our lessons are being laid down for us. Okay, and again, this is Kronos. Okay, in Greek mythology, Kronos had a habit of eating his children, <laughs> and Hades was one of those children that he consumed. Okay, so obviously, there's like some friction going on between these guys. Now, Zeus was also a, a child of Kronos. Turns out, not really, but the, the story just goes very deep. But to make sense of things here, Zeus is considered the one child of Kronos that he didn't get to eat, okay? He was, he was tricked. Kronos was tricked. And so he, he was going to eat Zeus, but he was tricked into eating a stone instead, okay? And I don't care if you believe in Greek mythology or if you do or whatever, anything like that. The point here that I'm trying to make is that there is some friction here. This is definitely like family drama going on, like masculine, powerful family drama. Okay. And not only that, but they are all in retrograde. Okay. And this is going to be going on pretty much throughout the rest of the year. Most of it till it will be over in September, but then there's other stuff going on. So anyway, now what I'm going to get into here is these symbols right here. Okay. This is the symbol for Capricorn. You can see Capricorn right here. These things are in Capricorn. Pluto and Jupiter are in Capricorn. Capricorn influences structure. It has a lot to do with government and power structures. It also has a lot to do with fear. Capricorn influences fear, okay? Um, wants us to take care of business. There's no like fun and games. And I'm not talking about people who are Capricorns. I have plenty of very silly friends who are, their son is in Capricorn. I'm just talking about Capricorn energy alone here. There's so much more to the natal chart. So if you're a Capricorn and you think you're not serious, there's, cause there's other stuff going on. But Capricorn energy is also, it's, there's fear coming from it. Capricorn is represented by the mountain goat, the mountain goat that wants to be on the top of the mountain, make it to the top of the mountain and be on top like a boss. Okay. Um, it's also the mountain goat that, you know, butts its way through obstructions. Okay, it's a tough energy, but it's also the mountain goat is definitely not at the top of the food chain. There's fear involved here. Okay, and then furthermore, Aquarius. Okay, Aquarius is the humanitarian energy. Okay, Aquarius is represented by the water bearer, the water bearer who carries the water. Water carries information. Okay, the water bearer who pours the water out. For all of humanity, water always finds its level and spreads itself evenly throughout humanity. Okay, that's the Aquarius energy. It also has a lot to do with like technology um, and revolutionary changes. Okay. Again, Saturn can influence like restrictions and limitations. Okay. So Saturn is like restricting humanity right now. It's like it's it's really like this. Um, this very, almost like, especially since these things are in retrograde, so it's like confusing. Oh my gosh, we've got Neptune and Pisces, which is making confusion even more so. But this energy, okay, what's going to happen here? Saturn's actually going to retrograde back into Capricorn. And Saturn really likes working in Capricorn, okay? This is going to be a very interesting year. And it's, there's very, a lot of fear involved here, okay? This retrograde energy wants us to reevaluate how we feel about all of this. What I'm deep in the psyche, it wants us to reevaluate our faith, okay, and reevaluate where that fear is coming from. There's so there, okay, so mm, there's so much I could say. I'm trying to decide which was the most important. Um, 
really what's going on here is this is like, there's, there's a huge transformational process here happening on earth, not just with humanity, but also with the powers that be. Okay. There's like literally, uh, like friction drama going on. Okay. With the power structures and humanity. Okay. And the, the whole point of me making this video is to really talk about this fear that is going on. I've made a couple of videos about it already. It's, it helps me like immensely to understand where this stuff is coming from and understand that it's a transit and it will pass. This is a slow moving transit, but basically what's going to happen here is yeah, Saturn's going to retrograde back into Capricorn and then eventually, and these are all in retrograde throughout pretty much till September. And then Saturn's going to start to move forward again. Jupiter will start to move forward again. And there's something called the great conjunction where Saturn will be exactly conjunct Jupiter on December 21st of 2020. I'll make a whole nother video about that because I don't want this video to get too long, but there's some really interesting energies that we are experiencing here on earth. And it's being influenced from the heavens from up there. Okay. And that fear, it, it helps, again, it helps me to recognize that these are transits and they will pass. We need to reevaluate how we want to get through this. Okay. And no matter which perspective of truth you're coming from, you know, it's like, I've got people writing to me about, you know, um, oh, I'm going to get the virus. You know, they're really afraid of this virus. And personally, I haven't had any fear of catching a virus even once because I know that I keep myself health, healthy enough to, you know, override any sort of virus. Um, there's people that are writing me that they are so, they are so afraid that they're going to have to get forced vaccinations because of this virus. They're not afraid of the virus, but they're afraid of the forced vaccinations, which is justifiable. All this fear is justifiable, but Okay, and then and then we'll take it to a whole nother level. Some people are afraid of martial law, like because of how the power structures and authority is like cracking down on on humanity, you know, on across the whole entire world. And then there's you know 5G technology. People who are really afraid of 5G, again, very justifiably. All of this fear is justified, especially like people who are watching the news, whether you're, you know, reading memes on social media or, you know, watching truth or YouTube videos, no matter which direction it's coming from, there's still fear involved. It's time to reevaluate how we want to overcome this as a civilization, like collectively and individually. And then furthermore, up here, we have Uranus, in Taurus. Okay. This isn't necessarily fear involved. All this fear is, you know, really kind of coming from here, but Uranus in Taurus. Okay. Uranus influences abrupt changes that we were not expecting at all. Very just like surprise. It also influences technology. Okay. It's very revolutionary. Taurus is a very slow, patient, energy. It's very, um, it's like steadfast. Taurus is represented by the bull. Okay. It's like kind of stubborn and slow. It's a very beautiful energy again, ruled by Venus. It's a very lovely energy, but it does not like abrupt changes whatsoever. So these two, this is a, we've got like another, what, six years of this transit. This is abrupt changes to earth. Okay. Taurus is like the earth of the earth signs. Okay. Because it's fixed earth. It doesn't, it's very like, oof, <laughs> you know, it's the bull. It doesn't really want to budge. And you're honest is like, oh yeah, you're going to budge. All right. So even though it's a slow transit, it's a seven year transit. There's a lot of abrupt revolutionary changes going on. Okay. So there's like abrupt revolutionary unexpected changes going on that have to do with technology have to do with everything going on down here and then there's also this like slow moving super powerful deep in the psyche transformational process going on it's a lot and i don't know if i mentioned this yet neptune and pisces is creating confusion and delusions it's very 
it, it's like even illusions, okay? And currently with Mars and Pisces, <laughs> Mars doesn't do so well in Pisces. Mars is, Mars is about action. And it's like this masculine energy, you know, it, it's very, uh, it's kind of like the warrior type energy. And Pisces is this like wishy-washy spiritual energy. So hmm, things are just a little wacky right now. Thank goodness for Mercury and Gemini. That's working with some ease there. But regardless, there's a lot going on here. Okay, so I'm going to stop my, sharing my screen now and just kind of like drop in with you guys and tell you what I am doing to help myself get through this. I mean, first of all, it, it like I mentioned, it helps me a lot to understand where these influences are coming from. Okay. And to understand that they are transits. And if we all can like stick together, no matter, there's so many different like uh, perspectives of truth. There's so many opinions. And I, I read comments. I love reading comments and I see people getting attacked for having a different opinion than somebody else. It doesn't make sense. You're not going to get somebody to change their mind about the way they feel by attacking them. We really need to stick together here. We really need to like understand that we're being bombarded with information from every which direction. There's a lot of fear involved. Okay. And to love one another, love one another is the greatest thing that we can do, you know, and I understand, I definitely understand how that can feel hard sometimes, but love always wins no matter what. And then as far as, you know, I got to admit, I've definitely had some anxiety from time to time. Usually it's from being on social media and seeing, you know, kind of just getting bombarded with this, you know, so much information and so much, you know, like fear mongering. Um, and one of the things that does concern me is 5G. But personally, I think it's going to happen. I think, I think the whole 5G is going to get rolled out. And I think a lot of people are going to be very severely injured from it because it's not a good idea. It's not safe at all, but there's ways to protect ourselves. Okay. And just recognizing that really brings me to ease. I mean, uh, what a website that I highly recommend people look into is Synergy Science. I am not affiliated with those people at all and their products are kind of expensive, but worth it. Okay. Synergy science dot it's either dot org or dot com. I can't remember right now, but synergy science, just do an internet search for that and it'll pop up. Okay. That will, it's a good, even just recognizing that there are options out there to protect ourselves. I'm kind of um, manifesting that more stuff will be created. That's a little more affordable for more people. Um, but as for right now, I it might sound a little woo woo to some people, but I just don't care because I feel the protection from certain stones. Okay. This is something called black tourmaline, extremely protective. Okay. And I, I, oh, every time I'm on my computer, I have these two things. This is argonite, which is, um, it's man-made it's got minerals in there that these things together are reflecting the radiation from my computer away from me. I also, I wear, um, this is a, a pendant made by this guy. I always keep this on my computer. Um, this is, okay, this, I'm just going to show you the guy's website. This is very affordable. This is something you can, it's a sticker that you can put on your phone or your computer. Again, I am not affiliated with these people. I just, I trust their products. And a lot of this stuff has been tested. It can be proved that it actually does work. It needs to be used appropriately in order for it to work. Um, but there's research to show for that. Um, let's see what else. I also use something called an earthing pad. I sleep on an earthing pad, which keeps me connected to earth to again, like reflect, uh, dangerous rad radiation away from me. I, I don't wear glasses. I, I can see just fine. I wear these to protect my eyeballs from the blue light coming off of my screen. I also, I make sure to turn the blue light all the way down on all my, my tablet, my computer, my phone. Um, I, I, I'm not going to show you how to do that. Just look into how to turn the blue light down on your, on all your little, you know, technological devices. Um, but most importantly, this is the thing that I feel most strongly about is getting connected with earth. Okay. Making sure that you get outside for at least one hour 
every single day. If possible, touch earth, okay? What's happening is not only the radiation and everything that will protect us, touching earth keeps us grounded, okay? And it reflects radiation away from us when we are grounded. And furthermore, we're also constantly receiving positive ions from the sun and the luminaries. And we, we are, by nature, should be receiving negative ions from the earth. That's why it's so important to be touching earth. I've actually been out in my garden every single day, touching earth, moving dirt, moving soil, you know, getting really in touch with earth. In fact, any time that I have had any kind of like anxiety about what's going on or any feel any fear or anything like that, I get out to my garden ASAP. I've even done this at nighttime because it helps within 20 minutes of touching earth that anxiety is gone. The fear is gone. I'm like, oh yeah, this is real. This is tangible. Earth is real. You know, um, it's, it's not only protective, but it's, it's reality. Earth is the actual real reality. And in my opinion, astrology is as well. So the combination of astrology and my garden, that's what keeps me level. That's what keeps me grounded. That's what keeps me centered throughout this craziness that is going on. So I just wanted to share my own personal perspective about all of that and, um, and hope that it brings some of you some peace of mind. Um, if you would like to get an astrology reading with me, uh, you can send me an email at erinwageastrology at gmail.com. That's E-R-I-N-W-A-A-G-E at or astrology at gmail.com. All right. Thanks, you guys. Namaste.